Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another weekend prep video. This weekend was a snowy one and I am going to be mostly focusing on cleaning up my house from Christmas decorations this weekend. I'm also going to be doing some regular cleaning, but it was nice to kind of take the Christmas tree down, even though I do miss it and get the house vacuumed and cleaned up and back to normal. I also did quite a bit of cooking this weekend, so I'm gonna be sharing that with you. I'm gonna share some of the kids' ornaments that I've got them over the years. I am going to be making some fresh homemade salsa, so that has been a great recipe. I'm also going to be making some homemade beef birria tacos. They are so delicious. If you've never had these before, they are kind of a lot of work, but <laughs> they're really good. Uh, also just some regular cleaning in at my kitchen like I normally do. I also did get myself some Christmas dishes this year after Christmas sale. Those came in, so I'm going to be putting those away. And I'm also making a healthy dinner with some chicken and kale and broccoli. So come along with me. I hope that this video motivates you to get some things done around your own home. Okay, so we are starting out on Saturday morning. Adam actually had put some steaks in the sous vide water bath the night before. We normally do steak and eggs for breakfast on Christmas day, but we did not do them this year. And actually it worked out good because I was cooking a lot of stuff anyway <laughs> for our family dinner. So we decided to do some brunch this weekend. Um, he is gonna go ahead and sear those steaks in a cast iron pan. And then I'm just cooking some hash brown potatoes on the side. If you've never used a sous vide before, they make the most tender steak you will ever have have at home. I highly recommend it. I'll link the sous vide we have down below. Um, we've had a couple different ones, but this one has been the best so far. So here's my plate. I don't really prefer eggs for breakfast. I know I'm weird. So I just had my steak with some A1, which I have to have A1, <laughs> and some hash browns. It was totally delicious. Really, really recommend. Uh, I also took a nap on this day because I just felt like I needed to sleep. So I did take a nap. I wasn't feeling very good anyway. So did that kind of relaxed for the remainder of the day, but then it was time to cook dinner. Thank the Lord. I had gotten a green chef box earlier this week. Thank you to green chef for sponsoring this week's weekend prep video. They have been the longest supporter of my YouTube channel. So I am so grateful to them and they are my favorite meal kit specifically, not just for meal prepping. I like getting their kits to meal prep lunches, but I also love their dinner meal kits because they are a true lifesaver when I am low energy and I have no idea what to cook. If you're not familiar with Green Chef, they are a USDA certified organic company. They make eating well easy and affordable, and they have options to fit every kind of lifestyle. They let you choose from a wide array of options for different diets. So whether you want to do like a keto slash paleo meal plan, or you're vegan or gluten-free or vegetarian or Mediterranean, or you just want a balanced meal plan, they have all of them. They make cooking easy and their recipes include pre-made measured sauces, dressings, and spices, which give you a ton of extra flavor. The best part is they are offering a great offer right now to my viewers. You guys can go to greenchef.us and use code GenChapin130 to get $130 off plus free shipping on your first box. Again, the link is greenchef.us and use code GenChapin130 to get $130 off plus you get free shipping on your first box. So tonight I decided to make these chicken broccoli bowls. I'm gonna start out by chopping up the ingredients for the pickled uh, radish and carrot mixture, which turned out super delicious. So I just have this daikon radish here that I'm kind of just cutting into matchsticks. I wanted to try and cut them the same size that the shredded carrots were, so everything would be uniform. One thing I like about Green Chef is that a lot of their meals are family friendly. So depending on what I 
have in my box, I can usually count on uh, at least two, if not all of the meals being suitable for a family, which you guys know is sometimes difficult if you have kids. But what I did here was just put the radish and the carrot in a bowl and I'm adding some apple cider vinegar, some honey and some salt and pepper. And I'm just gonna stir that up and let that sit while I prepare the rest of the meal. So I have some chicken breasts here. I'm going to season those with salt and pepper. The original recipe called to cook these in a skillet, but I've really been liking to cook my chicken breast in the air fryer lately. I have found that it cooks really evenly and it gets nice and brown on the outside and stays juicy on the inside. So that has been working out well for me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and season this well and then I'll get it into the air fryer basket. Normally I cook it uh, probably at 390 degrees for 12 to 14 minutes. It kind of just depends how thick or thin your chicken breasts are. But um, I really think that Green Chef is a great option, especially if you're trying to eat better in the new year. They just offer a ton of different options. All of the ingredients are pre-prepped pre-chopped. Um, they have organic ingredients and the recipes are super easy to follow. Most of the time they take like 30 minutes or less, which is fantastic. So once I got my chicken in the air fryer, I'm going to start on the broccoli. So I just have a skillet here with some avocado oil. I'm adding my broccoli to that and then just going to season that with salt and pepper. So the veggie for this meal was a combination of broccoli and kale. The kale ended up actually being really good and I am not always the biggest fan of cooked kale, but this turned out delicious and even Adam commented that it was really good and he is not always the biggest fan of chopped kale either, especially when it's cooked. Um, so I just sauteed the broccoli for a little bit and added the kale. And then once that sauteed, I did add a little bit of water just to steam it up. But here is what my plate looked like. I served the chicken over the broccoli and the kale mixture. I put the carrot slaw on top and it also came with this ginger lime aioli sauce, which I drizzled over it. Also sprinkled it with some sesame seeds. This was a delicious dinner. Highly recommend you guys check out Green Chef. So that link will be down below. All right, so it's now the next day. It's Sunday morning. I got a refresh and a reset, got a good night's sleep, and I'm super ready to be productive today, so let's go. <laughs> so I got this uh, cookbook for Christmas. You guys probably heard me talk about it already. Uh, it is by Angelica from Simply Mama Cooks. She has a channel here on YouTube. I'll link her channel down below as well as the cookbook, but she has a ton of great recipes that I have been trying, and one of these is this homemade salsa. Basically, it's just fresh Roma tomatoes with onion, garlic, and jalapeno. I sauteed them in a saucepan and then I'm going to add some water and just simmer those. This is a really simple um, homemade, I was gonna say salsa, but it's more like a hot sauce you'll see when I get done with it. But you just wanna cook these for about eight to 10 minutes in the boiling water. Uh, if I had to do over, I would probably only add one jalapeno. I added two and it's quite hot. Adam actually really has been enjoying it, <laughs> but I have a little bit less of a spice tolerance than him. And I did go ahead and peel the tomatoes since when I boiled them, the skin just slipped right off. But this is the uh, veggies after they are done cooking. You're not gonna use the water. You can either strain it out or like I'm doing here, I'm just using some tongs to remove the solids from the saucepan and put those in a blender. You could also add like lime juice or cilantro to this if you wanted. I kept it simple and it just added some salt and pepper, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, whir this up in the blender until it is all combined. So one other thing she suggests that you add to this sauce if you want to is some chicken bouillon powder. Um, that actually does a really great job of seasoning this, so I would recommend it. So I did taste it and went ahead and added a little bit of that. And here is the completed salsa. You can see it's a little bit orange just from the mixture of the tomato and the jalapeno together, but it tastes delicious. So now I'm going to make some easy slow cooker beef birria. This this is a sort of like um, like a shredded chopped beef and we're actually gonna use it for tacos. I've been wanting to make this forever and this weekend was finally the weekend I did it. So I have a variety of 
dried chilies here. Um, I could find those pretty easily in my grocery store, but I know that you can also order chilies online if you can't find them around you. So the first step when you're working with dried chilies is to give them a wash or a rinse. They are um, quite dirty sometimes and they do have debris on them. So I would highly recommend not skipping this step. What I like to do is use a kitchen shears to kind of cut the chilies open and I discard most of the seeds. And then I just use my salad spinner to give them a really good rinse. You don't really need to soak them very long or anything like that. Just a really great rinse in cold water will do the trick. Once the chilies are washed, we're gonna go ahead and rehydrate them. So I'm just putting them in a saucepan here and then I'll fill that saucepan up with cool water. We'll put this on the stove bring them to a boil. And then once they come to a boil, you'll actually just turn the heat off and put the lid on and let them soak for about 30 minutes. So while that's working, we're gonna go ahead and saute our beef. So I'm using my Instant Pot. You can also use a slow cooker to do this, but I figured the Instant Pot would be just as easy since uh, I could saute the meat as well in there. But I have some chuck roast and some arm roast. You can use whatever type of um, cut that you want. Chuck roast is normally what's recommended, but the arm roast is good too because there is a bone in there and that will help give the broth more flavor. So I cut this meat into large pieces. I seasoned it with salt and pepper and I'm just heating up my instant pot with a little bit of oil in the bottom. And then you just wanna saute these pieces of beef until they are browned on all sides. You can see here, my chilies are done boiling. So, or the water has come to a boil rather. So I'm gonna put the heat on that and just let them soak for that 30 minutes. So once the beef is browned on both sides, you can go ahead and remove it from uh, the pan, I had to do this in batches, obviously, because the bottom of the Instant Pot isn't all that big, um, but that's fine. You just wanna get some color on the outside of the beef, and it's also helpful to get some of that fond and flavoring on the bottom of the pot. We're gonna end up deglazing that just to make sure that we get all of that great flavor into the sauce. So if you've never had these tacos before, they're basically like this slow simmered beef. You chop it up, you make like this beef consomme, and then you skim off the fat. You actually use the skimmed off fat from the consomme to fry the tortillas in, and you fry these tacos with the beef and cheese inside, and then you dunk them in the beef consomme. Normally, um, I'll put like cilantro and onion in there, and these are so good. It's like pure <laughs> comfort food. It kind of takes a long time to make, but I would highly recommend it. So I deglazed my Instant Pot with some water just to get the um, fond up off the bottom of the pan. And then I added a couple teaspoons of this beef bouillon powder. Um, she cooks a lot with that, and I like to keep this in my cupboard as well. I've always kept it in my cupboard for quite a while just because it's easy to make beef broth and chicken broth with this. So after I was done deglazing the pan, I chopped up one onion and added that to the Instant Pot as well. And next I'm going to add some seasonings. So I'm adding some fresh thyme. You could use dried thyme if you want to. I went ahead and put the beef back in there as well. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper. I will um, link this original recipe video down below if you guys want to check it out. And I believe she has the recipe typed out in the description box of her video. I'm going to to add some uh, bay leaves. Basically, you're just trying to make this broth as flavorful as possible. Um, that way it tastes really good when you dip your tacos <laughs> in it. I also added just a pinch of ground cinnamon and ground cloves and it just gave that a stir so everything was well combined. So once the chilies are done soaking, that's kind of the last little bit that we're gonna add to the um, Instant Pot before we cook the beef. So I'm just removing those chilies from the soaking water. You don't wanna 
use the soaking water to thin out your sauce because it's bitter after you've soaked your chilies in it. So I'm just gonna put those in my high speed blender. And then I am gonna add a few ingredients to that chili sauce as well. So just some fresh cold water. I also have one chipotle pepper in adobo sauce that I'm going to add to that. That part is optional, but I think it does really give it some good flavor. I'm also going to add some cloves of garlic and some Mexican oregano as well. So once that's all in the blender, I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that up. And then this will make the chili sauce that we will flavor our beef and our consomme with. So this is another step that I have learned from her is to strain your chili sauce. When I've made this before, this is a step that I have skipped and I honestly think that you need to definitely do it. It's just my opinion and my preference, but you just place a fine mesh strainer over the instant pot and kind of push the chili sauce through with a spoon until all of um, the liquid is out of it. This just helps ensure that you don't have any chunks of chili skin or anything like that in your beef. Um, my sister and I did it this way too when we made our homemade enchiladas and our pozole. Um, I just, I think it's an extra step and it takes a little bit of time, but I highly recommend it. So there's the chili paste or the chili sauce, I guess you would say in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and stir this around. And then I am going to cook this in my instant pot. I believe I put it on high or manual pressure for 55 minutes, but you can also make this in a crock pot. Like I said, as well, I believe she recommends cooking it on high for six hours, or you can do it on low for eight to 10 hours. Um, it was just more convenient for me on this day to do it in the instant pot, but whatever works for you is fine. I did also go ahead and use my larger eight quart instant pot for this particular recipe. Um, but here's what the beef looks like when it's done. I did let it do a natural pressure release. You can see that it's falling apart and really delicious. You can also kind of see too that top layer of fat on the top of the uh, broth or the beef consomme. What I'm going to do is take all of the beef out and just put that in a dish to rest. And and then in batches, I poured the beef broth or consomme into my fat separator. This is an OXO fat separator. I've had it for a long time. I'll link it down below. It is super useful. And then I basically separated the fat from the broth. Um, while I was working on that, I decided to chop up the beef. So I just removed the um, meat from like the bone and removed like all of the solid pieces of fat. And I'm just going to cut this up, like chop it up really um, with a knife. You want it to be super fine. And if you or if you have extra, which you're probably going to have extra because this makes so much, you can obviously freeze this for later. You can use it for tacos. You can use it for burritos. I've made burrito bowls with it. Um, it's just really tender, really um, lovely seasoned beef. So I would highly recommend it. So you can see here that I return the beef to the instant pot with the broth portion of the consomme. I have the fat separated out and you can see here that this is the fat portion and that's what we're going to use to saute our tacos in. So you, what you want to do is just add some of that to a skillet. I'm just using a big nonstick skillet and you want to have some corn tortillas. And what I'm doing is just kind of warming the tortillas in that oil and making sure that those are warm and pliable before I add the filling.
Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of meat to each tortilla, followed by a little bit of grated chihuahua cheese. Make sure that you don't overstuff these or they will be super hard to fold. But basically what you'll do is cook and crisp these over medium heat until they are crispy on the outside and melty on the inside. And OMG, are they delicious? Like I said, this is like kind of an involved recipe. It's a multi-step process, but in the end it's worth it. You end up with a lot of leftovers that you can and freeze as well and I do recommend cooking these over just medium heat because you want them to crisp on the outside without burning once they're cooked on the first side you can go ahead and carefully uh, turn them over <laughs> to the other side. I've seen where people put the cilantro and onion on the inside of these. I just prefer to sprinkle it on top once they're done. But once you give those a turn, then just cook them on the other side until they're nice and crispy and then go ahead and drain them on a paper towel. But this is what they look like on the plate. I put some red onion and cilantro on top and you just serve them with the consomme along with some additional onion and cilantro inside there. Delicious, highly recommend this recipe even though it's a lot of work. Yes, I agree. <laughs> okay, so another thing I did on this day was I wanted to get my kitchen cleaned up. So I don't have a ton of Christmas decorations in my um, kitchen this year, just a few wreaths on my cabinet doors, and then I had a wreath on my range hood as well, but I definitely, definitely needed to do some straightening and cleaning otherwise in my kitchen. So I'm just getting some dishes put away before I load the dishwasher and I try really hard to keep up with my cleaning of my kitchen throughout the week. I do cook pretty much every single night except for um, Fridays we order pizza but other than that I cook dinner <laughs> six nights a week and sometimes I make easy things but most of the time I'm cooking like a full-fledged meal so my kitchen doesn't stay clean for very long like my stove constantly gets dirty my counters constantly get dirty it's just just a fact of life, right? So the weekend is the time when I normally try to do a little bit of a deeper clean by just making sure that things are wiped down, making sure that I get caught up on all of my dishes. Obviously I do, you know, load my dishwasher during the week. Um, I mostly run it once a day during the week, but when I'm cooking on the weekend, sometimes I run it up to three times a day. It just depends on what's going on and, and how much how much how much i end up cooking uh during the weekend i definitely could not fit everything that i needed to wash in the dishwasher so i did have to hand wash some dishes as well uh, which is fine there are some things that i just prefer to hand wash anyway definitely my knives like my chef's knives i do not ever put those in the dishwasher i used to put them in the dishwasher a long time ago and i just found that um, it makes them dull and it makes them not last as long so i would not, definitely not um, recommend that also try not to soak them in water either for long periods of time that's another thing that can ruin them um, but we also have like a bunch of water bottles and things like that the kids have to take water to school every single day and we are always using water bottles around the house too we don't really buy bottled water since we have a fridge um, filter so which is something I didn't really have until I was like 35 years old which is really nice to have so we have a ton of reusable water bottles that I'm always having to wash out
Okay, so I'm also going to give my sink a good scrub. This is something I normally do on the weekends as well. I like using the Barkeeper's Friend. I use a couple different types of cleaners for my sink, but this is one of my favorites. I think it just does a really good job of not only getting up all the gunk and the dirt and whatever else is stuck on your sink, um, but it also rinses really cleanly as well. And I like how it lathers up. I've been trying this baking soda scrub from Molly Suds and it's okay, but I always feel like I go back to the barkeeper's friend and it's always just so satisfying to clean out your sink. I don't know why, but it is. And then at the end, I'm going to put in a tab to clean out the uh, garbage disposal. So I'm also going to clean my stove on this day uh, you can see that there were quite a few crumbs and whatnot on there i really love this crud cutter cleaner um, i end up having to order this on amazon so i can link it down below because i cannot or I, ha I shouldn't say i can't find it around me but i have a hard time finding it around me i can't get it at walmart and once in a while like some of the hardware stores here will have it. But if you never tried it, it's it's really great. I actually just got a book. Um, it's a cleaning book. I don't know how I stumbled upon it, but somehow I did and I ordered it on Amazon. And this lady tells you how to clean your house with only three products and crud cutter is one of them it does like a great job if you're looking to clean your oven <laughs> out too but um, i can link that book down below along with the cleaner i highly recommend it and then when i'm done doing that i always just use some glass cleaner and a microfiber cloth to kind of shine up the stove um, having a gas stove is super annoying to clean um, but I like cooking with gas, so I deal with it. Um, but honestly, like the flat top stoves are obviously probably so much easier to clean. I've never had one of those before. Um, I've always either had gas or the electric coils. So now I'm going to go ahead and light a candle. This is a wood wick candle that I got from Walmart. I actually really like it. And I told you guys in the intro that I did finally purchase some uh, Christmas dishes. So I have wanted Lennox Christmas dishes for so long. Like I would say the past four years, I've kept looking at them and looking at them. And finally I had some Christmas money this year and they were on sale. So I decided to order some, I ordered all mine on Amazon, but I think you can get them at department stores as well. Um, I ended up getting some plates and these uh, water goblets, which I thought were super pretty. And I got a couple of other things, but basically I just wanted to wash these and get them put away for the next holiday season. I can't wait to get them out and use them next Christmas. They are so pretty and they make me so happy. I know it's kind of a frivolous purchase, but hey, it was Christmas money and it's something I've been wanting for a really long time. And it's honestly something I can probably pass down to Kira at some point. So after that, I got to work on putting all of my Christmas decorations away. I got some new containers from uh, Michael's this year. They had them on 50% off clearance. And so I got a couple more containers just to make sure I had enough room to put everything in. And one of the things I really tried to do this year was to put everything back in containers kind of by location. So like, for example, I took this particular box and just labeled it mantle. So I could put all of the things in here that were on the mantle. That way next year, it makes it easier to just pull out this box and know like, oh, okay, this is where all this stuff goes. Cause I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I switch things up and like from year to year, I can never remember where I put things. And so if I really like how I set something up, then I can just do it that same way <laughs> the following year, as long as I have all the items together. So like I said, this was all the stuff from the mantle. I decided to try and fit the stockings in there as well. Um, sometimes I get questions on our stockings and where I got them. They're personalized stockings from Pottery Barn. Um, I highly recommend them. They will last a lifetime and I just think they're super pretty. They have a ton of different options and you can get them embroidered with your names on them. Also, don't forget to take all the little batteries out of all of your little Christmas lights and things. Uh, if you leave the batteries in there, they will leak and corrode and next year when you go to get them out your things won't work 
and you'll be mad at yourself ask you how i know i've actually done that before uh, but anyway i put all of the stockings there on top this was kind of a tight squeeze but i did uh, get everything in there and the next thing that i worked on was taking all of my ornaments off the tree uh, we have a um, ornament box i got this several years ago i think at joanne on clearance maybe something like that i can't remember um, this is one of those things I never thought that I needed until I got it. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like the best thing ever. Especially if you have a lot of breakable ornaments. I feel like it does keep them very nicely separated and keeps them from breaking. So I do normally put more than one ornament into each uh, compartment. I just try to make sure that I don't put breakable ornaments like in the same bin with something like hard and heavy <laughs> so that they don't break. And so far I haven't had any issues, uh, but you can see I have quite a few different eclectic ornaments. I don't really prefer to have a themed tree in my living room. I just like seeing all of the different ornaments and everything that we have. It's very like sentimental and eclectic. Although I did do a themed Iowa Hawkeye tree in our basement this year, which I think turned out super cute. I shared that in a video during Vlogmas. Um, so that was fun to do. And I did go ahead and take that down this weekend as well, although I did not film it. Okay, so here is the story of the pre-lit Christmas tree that I hate. So when we moved into our house several years ago, we had a smaller tree and we moved it in and now we had these like nine, 10 foot ceilings and I'm like, this tree looks ridiculous. So we waited until after Christmas and we went and got this tree at Menards on clearance. Well, it's a pre-lit tree and I was like, oh, this is gonna be so awesome. I'm never gonna have to buy lights for it. Well. It just every year another section of it stopped working and so what i've had to do over the years is just put more lights on it and so what we actually did this year was after we took the tree apart we took all the lights off it so now it's not a pre-lit tree it's just a regular tree which is fine with me because i would rather just use my own lights than sit there and put a plug or I don't know, however you fix Christmas lights, I don't know, everyone's like, oh, it's easy. No, it's it's not, it takes forever and I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't have time, I don't have time to do it. So uh, anyway, I got all the stuff off the tree. Um, I We took all of the lights off, which took forever, but now we just have a plain tree that we can put lights on. Next year, it will be all good, hallelujah. So these strands of lights actually still worked and I wanted to kind of store them in um, a neat way instead of just like piling them all into a box like, like I normally do. So I just took some cardboard, this is an Amazon box that I had laying around and I kind of cut it into sections and then I cut a slit into each end of the cardboard basically slid the um, end of the Christmas light in, lights in there and then just wound it around. And this works super well to keep them corralled. I'm sure that there is a, uh, you know, official product that you can use to do this, but I think a piece of cardboard works just as well. So here is another bin that I have and I put my throw pillows in that and I also put my Christmas lights in that and then I took my Christmas wreath which is beautiful off the front door and I had some battery operated lights on that as well so I'm just removing those and putting those away too. I do have several uh, wreath storage bags that I use. Most of them I've gotten on clearance either at Walmart or Joanne. That's one thing I would recommend is if you're looking for new Christmas storage ideas or decorations, definitely don't buy them full price. Wait until after Christmas and purchase them because they are gonna be like at least 50% off. You're gonna get a great deal on them. So next I wanted to undecorate my dining room. I normally just kind of put up some different tchotchke uh, decorations on my bookshelves in the dining room. So I wanted to get all those taken down and kind of get everything back to normal. I had to finagle these 
different items into a few uh, boxes. So we'll see how that works when I go to take them back out <laughs> next year. But I also like to collect Santa mugs. And so I have quite a few of those. I just kind of nestled those around in this box with another uh, couple of wreaths just to keep them from breaking. Added some more items in the top and got that uh, boxed up. And I also labeled this as well because I always think I'm gonna remember what's in that and then I never do. Okay, so here are the box of ornaments that I have for my kids. So every year I get them a keepsake ornament. Most years I get them a Hallmark keepsake ornament, but sometimes if I don't have the chance to order it, it's just another ornament, but it's always something like themed. So either something that they're like enjoying or something that represents their year or something like that. So I went to go ahead and put those away, but I love doing that because then when they leave my house, they're gonna have a ton of ornaments to take with them. I I just think it's such a cool tradition. I've been doing that ever since they were born. So now it's time to vacuum because that red ribbon that I took off the tree is uh, glittery. And so there was glitter all over, all over my furniture, all over my carpet, all over everything. So I'm still loving my shark vacuum that I got from, did I get it from Costco or Sam's? I can't remember. I think I got it from Costco, but the shark vacuum is winning. It's like winning even put head to head with the Dyson, the shark is winning. I don't know if I'll ever buy another Dyson again, although I do really like the cordless Dyson that I have for my kitchen. Um, the shark does a great job and it's a lot cheaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, living room vacuumed and then I'll show you what everything looks like when it's all clean. All right guys, so I wanted to show you how everything turned out. This is the next morning after I undecorated. So here is my entryway. I got this awesome canvas from Lindsay Letters. I love everything on her site. I can link her site down below, but this is a new uh, print that she has. I love this quote. It's my favorite quote in the history of ever. It's called the man in the arena, citizenship in a Republic. It is not the critic who counts not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who never know victory nor defeat. That is a Theodore Roosevelt quote, and I just love it because I feel like, especially in this day and age, people are just so critical of other people. Like, just in general. I mean, I think the internet has like really exacerbated that. Um, but I also just think that even in our real lives, people can just be so critical of us and our choices. And unless they are actually out there doing it, they're in the arena, they have no idea, right? Because no one has ever really walked in our shoes before. And so I just wanted to put that in my house um, as a reminder to myself and my family, my kids, whoever. Um, I just love it. So here is uh, my living room all clean. I love how everything turned out. Yes, I'm super sad that the Christmas decorations are gone, uh, but I did rearrange the living room a little bit. Um, if you guys saw in that previous clip, I put our sort of like love seat chair and a half in the other corner and I really love how it looks. I still have um, a lot of just green plants. Uh, we got several of those from my mom's funeral. Um, actually, all of our family got to take home a lot of plants, which I thought was really nice. So those are definitely uh, looking good in the house. But here's the wreath that I put up in the kitchen to replace the kitchen, or I'm sorry, to replace the um, Christmas wreath. And then I've still got my poinsettia out. I'm not sure how long that's going to last, but I'm going to try to keep it alive till it does. So thank you guys so much for coming along with me on this weekend prep video. I hope that you got inspired to do some cleaning and cooking around your own house. Don't forget to check out Green Chef. Again, they have been one of the longest supporters of my channel. And I always appreciate when you guys support me doing sponsored content and check out my links. So that will be uh, down below. I thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. 
Sayang 